All right. Well, thank you uh, for being here. Um, as we all saw this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the Security Council meeting on the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, in which he called one of the longest standing and most serious issues before the United Nations. He noted that the DPRK is the only country to have conducted nuclear tests this century. He added that we must assume that with each test or launch, the DPRK continues to make technological advances in its pursuit of a military nuclear capability. The Secretary General strongly condemned the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's repeated violations of relevant Security Council resolutions. He also expressed alarm at the risk of a military escalation in the region, including by miscalculation or misunderstanding. He said he is particularly concerned of, by the possibility that efforts to offset the destabilizing activities of the DPRK could also result in increased arms competition and tensions further impeding the ability of the international community to maintain and achieve a peaceful solution. The Secretary General stressed the, that the onus is on the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to comply with its international obligations. At the same time, the international community must also st step up its efforts to manage and reduce tensions. His full remarks are available upstairs. Not upstairs, rather, but online. I'm such a 19th century guy, what can I tell you? Um, turning to Mali, following a three-day visit to Mali, the Director of Operations for the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, John Ging, wants to draw attention to the complex emergency in Mali and the deteriorating humanitarian situation as a result of the conflict. Humanitarian and development needs are escalating across the country with the greatest vulnerability in the conflict and violence affected areas of northern and now increasingly central Mali. People are cut off from access to basic services including water, health and education, prompting an intensification of needs. Since February of this year, more than 10,000 people have been displaced. Radical, uh, threat, radical groups threaten teachers and communities. And as a result, 507 schools have been closed across the central and northern part of the country. Mr. Ging also said that, in, that 9 in 10 women between the ages of 15 and 49 have been subjected to the horror of female genital mutilation. And he calls on all to do much more to protect innocent girls from this brutality. He stressed that the focus and support for the security sector alone will not solve Mali's crisis. The key to support and empower is the people, or the people, of, is to empower the people of Mali. He added. And at the uh, end of their mission to the Central African Republic today, regional humanitarian officials urgently appealed for the world not to neglect the Central African Republic. Their message takes on a new urgency after an upsurge in attacks in the east and northwest has sparked fresh displacement. The regional representatives of UN agencies and non-governmental organizations met with affected communities, civil society, donors, aid workers, and authorities in Bangui and the northwest prefecture of Wampende, which has witnessed a recent peak of violence. Almost half of the population in the CAR depends on humanitarian assistance to survive. Due to the lack of state presence and services in most areas, humanitarian actors are delivering over 50% of social services to the population. Equally worrying is the continued and serious funding shortfall that threatens life-saving assistance. $400 million of humanitarian response plan for the CAR is only 10% funded. And you will have seen that last night we issued a statement in which we said that we are following the developments unfolding in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia with great concern, as well as calling for calm and restraint. Violence directed at democratic institutions and elected representatives of the people is unacceptable. We urge all political forces to resolve their differences through democratic means, strictly following the Constitution, in order to overcome the political impasse without further delay. And from Cambodia, the UN Human Rights Office today called on the Cambodian authorities to release five human rights defenders who have been in pretrial detention for one year and whose detention was yesterday extended for an additional six months by the investigative judge. And uh, 
On Monday at 1.15 at 1 o'clock, there'll be a press briefing here on indigenous human rights defenders with Vicky Tauli Corpuz, the special rapporteur of the rights of indigenous people, and Lourdes Tiban Guala, a member of the UN Permanent Forum on the Indigenous Issues, and she's from Ecuador. And then at 3.15, there'll be a briefing by the President of the Security Council for the month of May, Ambassador Rosselli of Uruguay, and he will brief you on the Council's program of work for the merry month of May. And today we thank Sudan, which has paid its regular budget dues in full, uh, in full, and the honor roll has now grown to... <laughs> Excellent, finally, on a Friday. Joe, if you have a question, you get the lead. Go ahead. I think I was first. Uh, you definitely, Joe was first. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, you've stated many times from this podium, and it's been the official UN policy to uh, support and encourage a two-state solution between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Uh, yet it's been reported that um, the UN Relief and Works Agency for the Palestinians uh, are maintaining in the curriculum in the schools that UNRWA runs, um, among other things, a map that shows Palestine from the river to the sea. Uh, I'm wondering how that comports with the idea of a two-state solution and whether the Secretary General would uh, urge uh, you know, UNRWA to reverse that policy. Our, um, as you correctly state uh, for the Secretary General, the two-state solution is the one solution. Um, as for UNRWA and its curriculum, I think there's been a lot of disinformation over the years on, on the curriculum uh, that is uh, taught in UNRWA schools. Uh, I haven't seen the particular report uh, you mentioned, but I would encourage you uh, to first check with UNRWA as to the veracity uh, of the report. Well, they, they have been quoted, and I'm, I'll, I can double check this, but they have been quoted as saying that after considering plan to uh, revise the curriculum, they came up against opposition from um, well, the, the, uh, the, the, the Palestinian the, Authority in Hamas, the, and they said that, let me, and sure. they said they abide by the curriculum of the quote host country. That that is their their that is the policy for UNRWA curriculum wherever the school is. I would encourage, as I said, I. I can't speak to the veracity of the report. I would encourage you to contact the UNRWA office here. Yeah. Sure. Some other things, but I'm sure you, you heard um, um, Rex Tillerson say that countries should suspend diplomatic relations with North Korea. And I wanted to know, given an answer you, earlier in the week, you'd said how that diplomatic relations are, in all, in all instances, a good thing. That was in response to a question about Morocco and Cuba. So what is... Antonio Guterres's response to Rex Tillerson's call to suspend diplomatic relations. I think Antonio Guterres' position on the DPRK, I think, has been elaborated very clearly in his own uh, remarks to the Council a few minutes ago, uh, where he underscored the the fact that the onus was on the DPRK to abide by institutions, by its obligations, international obligations, uh, but also stressing the need for a diplomatic solution. Right, but does that involve... I, 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 that's my answer to your question. No, no, but it's a specific... No, no, I, I, I understand your question, and right. you'll have to understand does he my favor answer. to spending diplomatic relations with other The countries? Secretary General favors diplomatic solutions. So he doesn't favor it. Carmen. Stefan, in general, should a country request uh, humanitarian help from the United Nations, would the UN be willing to give it? And I'm thinking particularly uh, Venezuela, which has a huge humanitarian crisis at the moment. Thank you. Sorry, I, I didn't really. Can you just repeat your your question? Regarding humanitarian assistance, mm -hmm. would the U.S. be willing generally to give humanitarian assistance to countries asking for it? And specifically, I'm thinking of Venezuela. Venezuela has asked for this type of help. Thank you. Uh, the United Nations is already, always ready to give help uh, and humanitarian aid to any country that asks for it. That is, that's a matter of, uh, of, uh, of, of policy. Um, we're obviously continue to be concerned about uh, the developments and the current situation in, uh, in Venezuela. Over the past week, uh, the Secretary General has been speaking to a, a number of contacts and interlocutors, including the mediators uh, that are involved in the, in the issue and, uh, and the Holy See. 
uh, to try to push and continue to push for a um, uh, for a solution uh, to the current impasse uh, to the current impasse that we see. Uh, and we saw, I think, on the uh, um, two days ago, uh, a communique being issued by the former heads in state of government who are facilitating uh, the process of dialogue. Um, and again, I think we call on both the, the government and the opposition to engage sincerely and to immediately reactivate that dialogue. Errol, and then, sorry, Iftikhar, who's Thank who's you, Mr. Zurich. Uh, last week, I hope I heard. Last week, Secretary General told us when he was talking to us uh, with the chairman of the African Union that he is preferring the all-party concerned on North Korea to be involved in negotiation, in diplomatic solution. Uh, would I assume, or what do you mean by that? Did, did he mean by six-party uh, nation that were engaged in talks, previous talks, and number two, how that would uh, reconcile the uh, preference by United States that China and U.S. would lead that diplomatic solution. Uh, if I recall what the Secretary General said uh, a week ago, he was just stating its fact that there had been six parties involved in these uh, in these talks. Um, Again, I think the Secretary General gave a fairly detailed briefing to the Security Council uh, a little over an hour uh, ago, and I think his position should be taken as what he's just said. Yes, sir. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Iftikhar, go ahead. And okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, as you know, the situation in Afghanistan has really deteriorated with Taliban's full-fledged spring offensive and uh, a lot of casualties, civilian casualties, and the UN report attested to that. Uh, is the United Nations playing any role uh, on the political track to bring about a peaceful settlement? I think that's the, the, the aim of the UN mission there is to help a, a political process and help to find a peace, uh, help build a more peaceful future and society for the people in Afghanistan. I think, the, as you mentioned, we've issued a couple of reports, one on civilian deaths and, and on other issues. Um, and that's really the focus of the work of the, of the UN there. Yep. <clears throat> Stefan, on Macedonia. Uh, yesterday, uh, Macedonian parliament elected the speaker of the parliament, though it was, uh, uh, they were attacked uh, after that. Uh, does Secretary General support the election of the new speaker, having in mind that generally we support uh, uh, democratically elected institutions. It, the focus of what uh, of our position is one uh, to underscore that violence directed at democratic institutions and elected representatives of the people is unacceptable and that we urge all political forces to resolve their differences through democratic means strictly adhering to the Constitution in order to overcome political impasse without further delay. It is not up to the Secretary General to approve a vote or not to approve a vote in the national parliament. Our basic message is that uh, there is a Constitution which should be uh, adhered to um, and that this kind of violence directed at elected uh, democratic institutions is really not the right way to go. Oleg. Follow up. Sure. Uh, does that mean when, when the Secretary General says that he supports the, uh, the, the uh, respect for the Constitution in Macedonia and moving forward without any delay, does the Secretary General support or uh, would like to mention that the President of Macedonia, Mr. George Ivanov, is delaying that action for peaceful transferring of the uh, transition of the, of, of the new government, to again, the new government. Again, uh, it's, the Secretary General has no, no role in the political process in, in, in Macedonia. What we're underscoring are issues of principles, of upholding, uh, upholding a constitution and calling on political parties to resolve their differences uh, through democratic uh, means, following the the Constitution, which is a roadmap for any country on how to resolve these issues. Oleg. Thank you, Stefan. 
Mm, any updates on the airstrike near Damascus on the international airport? And also, um, uh, Ambassador, U.S. Ambassador Haley yesterday accused the uh, authorities th of th Syria of uh, robbing the U.N. convoys of medication, uh, baby food and other items and reselling them at the black market. Can you confirm that this is happening and I, what are you doing? I can confirm market? half of that because that's something the, I think Mr. O'Brien has repeatedly told the council and something we've repeatedly flagged of uh, medical items, uh, sometimes even uh, female hygienic items being removed from, uh, from convoys, which is completely unacceptable. Uh, whether or not these things end up on the black market it's not something we're able to verify, at least not something I'm able to, to speak to. I think Mr. O'Brien was very clear in uh, the hurdles that each and every, almost each and every humanitarian convoy has to go through, uh, whether it's on the government side on the, or on the other side, of uh, checkpoint after checkpoint, uh, of administrative roadblocks, um, all of which is unacceptable. Humanitarian aid needs to sail through uh, these roads and needs to get to the people it needs uh, that need it. Mr. Lee. Sure. I want to ask you about these new uh, sexual abuse allegations in, in the DRC. Seems like, like now that UN, I guess there is naming, you know, Romanian military observer accused of sexual abuse of a, of a minor and, and others, including from Burundi. Have you seen the story? Or I have not seen it, but I will, uh, I will take a look My, at it as soon as we leave the podium. seems like Manusco has said this to the BBC okay, on I, the I, record. I'm, I'm, I'm not disputing it. I'm right. just saying if I, don't see it, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, it's hard for me to respond. Okay, but you, I would assume I've seen all the posters around the building. Like, wouldn't DRC have said, wouldn't Manusco have told the UN? Uh, Ma Matthew. I, I, okay, all right. Uh, it's, all right. Yeah. Let me ask you this then. Maybe you've seen this. Francis Lorenzo, the head, former head of South-South News and former deputy permanent representative of the Dominican Republic to the UN, has expanded his guilty plea uh, in the Southern District of New York to a, a clear and clean admission of having bribed former PGA, may he rest in peace, John Ash. And he's going to testify against Englap Sang. And so it gives rise, this now seems to be previously he just, it was tax charges. Now he's saying, on the record, taking responsibility, saying he knew it was wrong at the time that he did it. Mm -hmm. So my question is, as the, case, as the case gets more pointedly in terms of what took place inside the United Nations walls, and yesterday I saw the former DGACM individual now retired who I believe it, it seems from the audit is the one that so changed the document what are the ramifications was anything ever done for that changed document and what is exactly OLA doing as now there's the admission not just of tax charges or evasion if we of first of all uh, the, the alleged uh, bribery you're referring to does not involve uh, a staff member of the UN there were audits done and and the situation was looked at uh, very carefully uh, in the past, uh, the past two years, if I'm, my memory is correct. We continue, obviously, to follow uh, the developments in the case. And if we need to act upon anything that is revealed uh, by the time the case is done, we shall do so. But I guess the, 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 the goal of the bribery was to obtain a UN document saying that a Macau conference center was needed. And that document was obtained from DGACM. So are you saying that somehow the actual, the ultimate act that they wanted was done without any that's money not, being that's not, that's not what I'm saying. But what was done? I saw the guy walking around. Was there, was there any repercussions well, think, for any individual named in the audit? Uh, as I said, as, as more information comes to light, we will act upon it. Okay. okay. And Burundi, do you have any answer now no. on the D2? I heard there was one in no. the works. Thank you. Could you call DPA? Well, you, hear, you get more emails from DPA. I know, but I'm asking.